Hello and welcome to another episode of Graham Hughes' podcast. Hello. Uh, today I'm joined by Adam Lee. And uh, we are in York. We are in York, which is the home to the National Rail Museum. And today we're going to be talking about the railways. And we are in a pub. And we both took the train to get here. So that means we can have a drink. Cheers. Cheers. It also both means, uh, it also means that we were both late getting here. Yeah, um, the state of the trains from Rotherham are not so good at the moment yeah. due to the flooding we've had. Well, the state of the trains from Durham, where I'm coming from, not so good either because but of the state of the... I don't trains. Know, the trains. <laughs> we're on the same train shit. line yeah. because we're both on the East Coast Main Line. Yes. Even if we're making a local journey. Well, no, Rotherham isn't. I had to get a connection, but it was all flooded. I mean, uh, you, there's photos on the internet. Where yeah, I'll yeah, send yeah. one Don to you. Yeah, yeah, of Rotherham it. Railway Station and the water level is actually at the platform during the floods last oh, week and right. it was shut down for a week and it's caused the new tram train that links to super tram in Sheffield to stop running and it's just an absolute shambles. So how did we get into this situation? Um, last week uh, the, a Tory put on their Twitter account that the government, if elected, the Tory government would, would set aside £500 million in order to re-put in the beaching axe lines. The lines that we lost on the beachings would be brought back and I'm like, hang on. So let me get this straight. After 50 years, yeah. right, yeah. Of, of, um, of, of basically the beaching acts happening and all the effects of that, mm -hmm. the Tories are now trying to get rid of it. Well, it's interesting because beaching is widely regarded as the most hated civil servant in the UK because of the amount of cuts that he did. And I've sent Graham a couple of info uh, sort of JPEGs yeah. that I'm sure you're going to insert on the fi on the video. <laughs> yeah. I know he hates doing that because it makes his editing time even longer. But <clears throat> it gives you an idea of just exactly how much <laughs> of our <laughs> railway system was actually axed. But, uh, but we've got to go back a little further here because I, I don't blame Beeching. No. And it's not an unpopular opinion here, but it, it, he was brought in, he worked for ICI, uh, Dr. Beeching. And it, yes, he was a physicist. He, he had a PhD in physics. And mm. he was brought in by a guy called Ernest Marples, who was the Secretary of State for, for Transport in the Tory government at the time, at the beginning of the 60s. Now, um, Ernest Marples was a bit of a rogue. He was, he was the co-founder of a company called Marples Ridgeway Construction. And although he uh, gave up his shares of, of his company... Um, he obviously s still had some ties to it, emotionally, perhaps. Oh, he sold his shares to his wife for one pound. Oh, that, nice work if you In can 1951, get it. Uh, on the proviso that she sold them back to him for a pound when he wasn't a minister anymore, mm -hmm. or wasn't an MP anymore. So what he did was basically he worked, worked up the ranks, became transport minister... And then, uh, yeah, he, uh, he had a, a bit of a problem, Adam. Do you know what the problem was? No. There was competition for his construction company because, do you know what they constructed? Roads. Roads. <laughs> Specifically motorways. So the Hammersmith uh, bypass, the ha sorry, the Hammersmith flyover was made by Marple's Ridgeway Construction. So you've got a guy who has a vested interest in <laughs> there not being railways in charge of... Transport. The railways. <laughs> In charge of transport policy, And basically. you'll never guess what he did. He instructed Beeching to find out where he can cut railway lines. Exactly. And Beeching was this went guy, to Was town. this guy a Tory, by the way? Yes, he was a Tory. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, by the way. Oh, by the way, just to, just to go a little bit further through the story, in case I forget to mention this. Uh, at the, in 1975, Ernest Marples fled the country to Switzerland. Do you know why? No. Because he owed the tax man £2 million. Pounds. Which, wow, uh, that's yeah. a lot of money In back 1975. Then. You could a... make a movie. For, I think the budget of Star Wars was about £2 million pounds back in the 70s. So, anyway. I've, I've actually, I'm never going to talk to you about movies ever again, <laughs> can I just say? Because every movie, he I've says, ruined every movie better <laughs> in space. And he says, like, the Shawshank Redemption. In space! In space, it's you know. It's always like, better in space. And it's like, Star Wars is Indiana Jones in space. Yeah. And well, Star it's, Wars it's, is the Shawshank Redemption in space well, or something like Star that. Star Wars is the Hidden Fortress by Akira Kawasawa in space. But look, 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 we're, get, we're getting off the point. Anyway, so, so anyway, back sorry, to yeah. Beeching. So Beeching was brought in from ICI. 
apply as a public servant, uh, a civil servant, yep. to work on these this this beaching um, uh, the report. beaching report. report. And what they did was they were very sly about it. They would go to uh, train stations on a on a on a on a Sunday and go, oh, there's nobody here. Mm. Oh, well, no one's using this line. It is unprofitable. And the problem with this is that it's like going and finding a country road and going, this country road isn't making as much profit as a motorway. So mm. I'll tell you what, we'll get rid of this country road. Tear we'll just it up. Tear it up. And you're like, well, how are people going to get from there to, oh, well, they'll, they'll have to take another route. They'll have to walk or cycle or do something else. Or use a car. Well, yeah, if you ripped up the road, they won't be able to do that. But Use, the, a, use a four-wheel stuff. drive, sorry. Yes. And what I genuinely believe, there was an article about this a few weeks ago, and it really spoke to me because I'm, I'm very passionate about, about trains and about public transport in particular. For those of you who don't know, I travel to every single country in the world without flying, and most of that was done on public transport. So it was buses and trains and ferries and bush taxis and things like this. And I got to see the transport infrastructure of every country in the world, pretty much, including little islands in the Pacific and yeah, how yeah. you get around them. To take away this train uh, infrastructure, two thirds of it was, was pulled up as a result of what what the what the conservatives did the recommendations were actually out of 18,000 miles of railway beaching recommended that 6,000 miles mostly rural and industrial lines should yep. be closed entirely yeah and a total of 2,363 stations were to close so out of those stations i mean th this this also includes the uh, liverpool over overhead railway state stations but that closed down a little before Beaching. That it could was, have been in the 435 that were already in mind for closure, by the way. Well, no, they, they, they were taken out at the end of the 50s because the, the, uh, the, the whole thing needed renovating and right, it would cost right. too much. Right. Um, but if you include them, in Merseyside alone, there are 89 closed railway stations. Including one which is right by Goodison, and a, not a, a, not far away from Anfield. Mm. And the train line is still there because they use it for goods, going yeah. to the docks, going to Seaforth docks. But, the, but there's no passenger line. They could put a special Saturday service on. You need to mm. get 40,000 people to that part of Liverpool every weekend yeah. through the season, <clears throat> because there's either a Liverpool match on or an Everton match every single weekend. Exactly. And, yeah. and at the moment, you'll go down one of the roads and you'll see uh, 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 the road is just a queue of 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 um of white coaches from the away fans yeah. who've turned up, especially if it's you know Manchester or well, this yeah. is one of the things that they actually actively uh, uh, encouraged. They called it bustitution, and that was to replace. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a prostitute with a with a, with a big, large, bust. big bust. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> perhaps I did. <laughs> so bustitution was. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it was a policy, that, and what they were going to do is they were going to replace... Okay, with that. You can tell it, 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 was, tell it was the 60s, couldn't yeah, you? Hey, missus, oh, right, hey, yeah. carry on, <laughs> wink, 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 nudge, nudge, say no more. <laughs> do you want to grasp my rod? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> but the bustitution, as they called it, was uh, supposedly going to um, uh, use the railway stations that were closed have the buses go from there to the other railway yeah, stations. But of course, ne that never happened. And the, the, yeah. all those bus services were shit-canned about two years after the stations were closed. Uh, and another critical error they made was that in, uh, in areas like Liverpool, they thought, well, what we'll do is we will take, we'll, we'll take away the ability for you to take uh, goods from the docks onto the rail line immediately. They'll have a railhead nearby and then they will be lorried over. So you put them on a lorry so why would and take you, them over. But why would you Why take would you them? put them on a lorry and then take them off again and put them on a train? Well, exactly. So no one did. So all of these... You know, railheads. Railheads. Been... So for a long time in Liverpool, that, that line that I just mentioned, which is the goods line that comes down from Seaforth Docks now down to... Uh, it, it, it then joins the, the old line, actually, from Liverpool to Manchester, the oldest passenger line in the world. Well, Stockton, Darlington, arguably, but... The, the Not everything that's first or best in the world came from Liverpool. It's true. It, 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 they all came from Liverpool. Um, <laughs> um, but for a long time, until very recently, there was a thing called the uh, Olive Mount Cord, 
which basically allowed you, so if you can imagine the map of Liverpool, you're coming down from the north and you want to go east to the rest of the country, because if you go west, you've got to go into the river, right? That you could only turn right <laughs> at that no. junction, so you could only go to back towards the river, and then you'd have to stop your train and then go backwards out of Liverpool, Bizarre. because they took out the Olive Mount Cord. So, a few years ago, at great expense, they put the Olive Mount Cord back in. And this is something that, when it comes down to the idea that there weren't enough passengers, or it wasn't profitable enough, why it's all, all, some, all such a nonsense. In 1968, there was a report that came out about the beaching report and the, the, um, the savings that had been made. Because mm. the idea was they were going to save loads of money. Yes. And they saved bugger all. Yes. And one of the big problems they had was that, and we still have now, we had hundreds of miles of tunnels, of viaducts, and of bridges that don't have a train line yes, going through them. But they still ha have to be maintained. They have to be maintained because they can't fall down. So that big viaduct over Merthyr Tidville, if that collapses, that's obviously going to cause a lot of disruption and probably kill people. Kill people. Yeah. So we have to maintain it. A good example of and this... And this was one of the criticisms of the Beaton Report, <coughs> was that he said, let's just close it, and he didn't give any thought to either preservation and maintenance of... Because uh, in the United States, when they close a railway line, it actually remains part of the rail yep. company yep. Uh, in case they want to press it back into service yep. at a later date. Yep. In the UK, we didn't do that. He just said, close them. Yep. And he just closed them, and he said... Uh, that's it, and you know you're now losing your railway link and, and the bus station. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer R. Curie. <laughs> anyway, uh, but <clears throat> um, the bus station is uh, that's gone, so you now have to have a car. Yes, uh, and and basically, but there's all these bridges and disused railway lines that they never considered returning them to serviceable condition for another use. Or, yep. and they, you know, in fact, uh, old old railway stations quite often see sort of discount carpet shops in them and, uh, and stuff like also that. So people, they, they, built, um, they built houses on the rail lines. Yeah. They built supermarkets and the, near, near me and uh, where I grew up in West Derby, there's a Sainsbury's that's sitting right on, on where the, the old rail loop line. line. Yeah. Uh, but when I was talking about the infrastructure and how, just how much it's costing the taxpayer to maintain this stuff, um, there's a short stretch of road on, I think it's Great George Street, which is down by Costco in Liverpool. Now, any scousers watching this will know what I'm talking about because they actually had to shut that road for over a year while they fixed about 200 meters if that of the road now the problem wasn't that the, the, you know the road was coming apart like a normal road and you you just have to re mm. resurface it the problem was that under the road was a iron bridge which was rusting under Corroding. the iron bridge cor corroding, corroding sorry. Sorry. Um, <laughs> under engineer <laughs> under the iron bridge was just mud mm. It used to be the line that went down to the Riverside station in Liverpool. <coughs> and um, essentially, uh, if you, you could go down a tunnel called the uh, Waterloo Victoria Tunnel that would take you from Edge Hill all the way to where Costco is now and then round onto where the cruise terminal is that you can actually see the line still in, on, on, on the, mm. uh, in, in, the, in the cobbles, right? That was the line, and that was the route it took. It used to go under the road. It used to go under, I think it's Great George Street. I might, I might be wrong with the name of that. It might be Great Howard Street. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. We, we don't script these things. No. Um, essentially. <laughs> As you can so, tell. <laughs> so they didn't just have to resurface the road. They had to rebuild this bridge over nothing. And that cost £10 million pounds for a bridge. Just 100 metres, if that of a bridge Good just to Lord. and that's just one example of hundreds around the country yeah, yeah. of these old railway bridges that are rust corroding corroding <laughs> <laughs> that are corroding and, and the taxpayer is having to pick up the slack on this <coughs> so when it came to actually cost saving the beaching asset axes actually cost us money yes and this was all done to make a tory minister richer sounds familiar so, <laughs> which brings it in a, in a roundabout way to Brexit. Was beating the first Brexit? Yeah. Well, but it, it caused people to feel left behind. Yes, it, didn't it? it, it I mean, did. that, that's, you've got whole sections of the north. Don't forget, here's a stat for you. They're spending more on Crossrail than they do on the entire northern 
rail network. You mean Crossrail that's already massively over budget and massively behind schedule? Yeah. For every person in London, the government invests around two thousand seven hundred pounds per person where we are today in yorkshire it's about five hundred pounds per person that's on public transport that's how much they invest per person so i got the train from rotherham to doncaster yeah and it was on a i think they call them a pacer right now these trains were brought in to have a limited life and i'm no train spotter or anything but i mean we're, we're, we're both not train spotters you know i mean not, it's you know, it's a train I'm, I'm far too rock and roll yeah you know i've been to 15 glastonbury glastonbury's wow yeah I know. yeah and you've been jealous. to every country i've been to every planet, country without yes. flying without you've flying. actually got two world records i do i, I, I didn't realize that the most countries visited in one year without flying which is 133 if anyone wants to try and break my record just don't go to the islands. That's my trick. Yeah, it, 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 it sort of did That's all. That's like my advice, because I went it, to the it, islands. It, 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 it did all Europe in yeah. like one week or something. Yeah, well, I got and stuck in Cape Verde for six weeks. I got stuck in Comoros for three weeks. Just don't mm. do the islands. Okay. And Top tip. Anyway, so anyway, that, that'll go into his uh, travel blog. Uh, but <clears throat> So I, I got on this train, which is called a pacer. Yeah. Now, these have been on the news quite a bit. Uh, Chris Failing Grayling uh, was has been... Um, he was Transport Minister under Theresa May. And these have been in the news quite a bit because Northern Rail are still using them. And they were basically introduced. Now, my, my friend is a rail enthusiast, and he was telling me that these were basically introduced. They were based on the Leyland National Bus that stuck a couple of bogies on each end, called it a train. You kidding me? And yeah, this is fact. This is a fair income fact, mate. And they, these they were basically... Based on a, on a bus, uh, they had a couple of extra doors cut into what would have been the driver's side. Oh, my word. And um, they used them on uh, commuter lines in the north. And they were only meant to be a stopgap of about 10 years mm. until new rolling stock was introduced. When do you think they were introduced? 1971. 1980. Wow. Wow. Or maybe 1977. I don't know. If you're watching this, Don, let me know. But anyway... <laughs> Right, and they're still in use, and it's it's like travelling in a third world country on these yeah. things. and this they, is they what led to people in the north feeling, feeling left disenfranchised. behind. Disenfranchised. You can't have social mobility unless you have physical mobility. And we have a situation now, because of your bustitution policy... Which is bullshit because we have deregulated public transport up here. And the other thing, not is in well, London, by the way. In London, it's all TfL. But we'll come on to that. In the a thing bit. is, even on these paces, right? They could put two or three of them together and get a train, right? Mm. How many people can you get on a bus? Seventy-five. Yeah. On a double decker, let's yeah. say, right? So you can get at least twice that number on a train. So it's more environmentally friendly to even use these buckets and nails that they're using. Yeah. But I mean. You, you've got a bus. It go it, right. I was. I had to go to Liverpool yesterday. Well, I went to near Liverpool, somewhere called Hale Halewood. Halewood. Yeah, and, that's and, where they make the cars. Uh, well, yeah, but I was at a chemical plant near there, right? Okay. okay. Oh, is that the oil refinery? No, that no. was Stanwell. Oh, uh, Stanwell. That was last year. But anyway, okay. <coughs> but um, oh, they yeah, it's the other side of the river. Sorry. <gasps> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah uh, I forgot about that. Anyway, so. I had to go over there and I had to drive. So I left at half past five in the morning. There was an incident on the M62. It took me three hours to get there when it's normally an hour and a half, hour and three quarters, yeah. right? Yeah. The thing is, if you're on a bus, that's still going to get stuck in the same traffic. And yeah. then I had to come back in my car and there was an incident on the M62 coming back, so I got stuck again. So it took me three hours each way. Yeah. So the, the emissions that these vehicles are spewing out and I was sat there and I'm thinking I'm one man in a car and I have to use a car for work you know and I, I, I took a friend of mine down to London and it was cheaper and easier to take our, my car than go yeah. you know on the train because the train it, it was 200 pounds return or something but the car cost me 70 quid in diesel and I can park it at the hotel. And it just, it just frustrates the hell out of me. And I'm sat there on the M62 yesterday and I'm looking around and there's all these cars around me, with each with one person in it. Yeah. And the environmental impact on it is, uh, of, of, this, of this policy and removing the social mobility from people has been catastrophic. 
There's it's a, been absolutely catastrophic for the North. The, the, there's a lad I used to go to school with, and he's very much, uh, you know, he, he, it's, it, he's, he's a bit, he's a bit gammony. You know, he, he, I don't know. If he, I don't think he voted for Brexit, but he, he uh, <coughs> he's not the type of person you'd expect to be a big green liberal person. He's a Tory yeah. voter, and uh, he used to have a Ferrari and drive it to work every day and slough or whatever he used to yeah, work. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, he's one of them. But he's recently moved to Amsterdam, and uh, you know, and he was total petrol head, Top Gear viewer, whatever. Yeah. Do you know how he gets to work now? Bike by his push bike. Yeah. Because it's more convenient and it's cheaper and it's faster. Why would you have a car in Amsterdam? Exactly. I mean, you just wouldn't. Would you? <laughs> you know. But this is how we could be. It's like Field oh, of Dreams. Oh. If you build it, they will come. If you build the infrastructure, people will use it. And the take... more people use it, you can drive down the price. Yes, exactly. And so, let's how much did of... it cost you to get to York today? Uh, it was twenty-six pounds oh, seventy. Oh, your luck. Return. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically half what I earn in a month on these YouTube videos from yeah, YouTube. Yeah, but that was fairly cheap. It cost me £45 for tickets Jesus. that were non-transferable. Yeah. If that train had got late into Doncaster from Rotherham, I'd have had to buy another ticket. No, if it's late, then they're responsible. You can get another no, train. No, because I bought them on separate tickets. It doesn't matter. Oh, right. It doesn't matter. I, I do that all the time because oh, it's right. ticketing. So right. split ticketing is basically if I want to go to Liverpool, it's cheaper for me to get a ticket to from Durham to York, York to Leeds, Leeds to Manchester, and then Manchester to Liverpool on the same train than it is just to buy a through ticket from Durham to, to Liverpool. That is bullshit, um, isn't it? I, 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 yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the huge issues we have with the train lines in this country is they are so eye-wateringly expensive. There's a common joke, isn't there, about uh, you know, to, uh, there's a guy from uh, Newcastle and someone from, from uh, Bristol and they want to meet up for a, 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 a meeting. It's cheaper for them to both fly to Barcelona yeah, and have the yeah. meeting over yeah. paella and yeah. <laughs> tapas and sangria <laughs> and then fly back to their respective the, the cities are, than for them to get the train to either the, of their the, cities. The trains are that unreliable now and that expensive in this country and the property crisis, it's actually cheaper for people to live in France and commute into London than to live in the commuter belt of, of, the, of oh. London. And that's commute not, into London. That's not very so, good for the environment, though. Is yeah, it? but they're, they're, they're using the train. Oh, they're I mean, using they, the Eurostar. They're using the Eurostar. So they, they get to Lille and get the early morning train, and they yeah. might might do couch surfing, or they might just go oh home every God. night. You know. But I mean, oh it, God, it is cheaper to get the Eurostar every day. And like I said, I said to my boss, I said, if you ever need to open a branch of the company in yeah. London. I'll, I'll go there. Yeah. I'll run it for you yeah. because I'll just live in northern France and get the train every day. But if yeah. I want to get the train down to London from Durham, it's £140 yeah. return. Yeah. It's £139 single <laughs> return. Yeah, it's it's £1 more. But it, it, it is just absolutely, you know, you, you're rubbing your eyes going, is, is, this, is this actually what you're going to charge with this? And, it, and it's seen as, as normal. Actually, if you get out of the UK and go to any other country in the world, it's usually cheaper than that, unless you're getting... You the, can travel the, from, like, the bottom of Italy to Rome for 27 quid, and there's, and there's none of this first class and scum class. It, it's, you know, it's oh, no, just... They do have different classes around Europe. Yeah, they, they do, they do, but a lot of them... They have I mean, it in India. Their standard class is like our first class. You know, so in India, they have third class, they have second class, second class AC, which is a bit of an upmarket second class. No, no, they have fourth class as and well, don't they? On the roof. The roof. No, yeah. no you can't do that. They're electrified, yeah, mate. Know, yeah. fr you get fried. Uh, that, that's a myth, actually, about yeah, people travelling on the roof yeah, in, in India. Not, not since the 60s, I don't think. Mm. Uh, uh, and then there's first class, uh, which is actually, the, the, you know, the, the, it, it, it's great because it means that if you want to get somewhere, you can get somewhere in the same time, but... You can have this. You can have a different mm. experience of the same train, and you can pay a different amount. And if you're going third class, you can get around India for buttons because it's all literally for pennies. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about TFL. Transport for London. TFL is absolutely amazing, and I just die with jealousy every time I'm in London, and I think, wow, this is a nationalised system. This is owned by TFL, which is part of. The, the, the mayor of London's remit mm -hmm. and 
it's all linked up. And I heard a story a couple of years ago when it turned out that TfL was taking over the suburban lines once the contracts uh, the, the contracts ran out for uh, Southern Trains and all these mm. crappy companies that operate down there. They were taking over all the su suburban lines. Over so all lines. the commuter belt. Like all, all the commuter Croydon. lines coming into London were going to be taken over by TfL. A cheer arose from the people in the Adam Smith Institute which is, a, you know, a, a, a conservative institute. And they're like, yay, it's been nationalized and now it's cool. And this is the thing with the, the network in the UK. Network Rail runs the tracks. So all of the infrastructure and the signaling and all that. You know, there's, there's two internets in the UK. Are there? Yeah, there's the internet that we all use. And then there's another internet which runs for the trains. Oh, okay. And that's got a lot of redundancy in it. We could probably use it to make our internet faster. Oh, we could probably use it, in fact, in Labour's uh, nationalised internet well, scheme. Maybe they could. I, I find that a bit weird. Someone says it's a bit like nationalising toothpaste. <laughs> 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 but whatever. But when, when it comes to the trains, so TFL <coughs> is nationalised. LNER is run by the government. Uh, now, LNER, it's, this is the second time the East Coast Main Line has uh, fallen into mm -hmm. government ownership. And yep. this, this is an absolute... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good service. And they've got these new trains. Uh, the Azuma. Uh, Azuma. I mean, I was on one of the Intercity 225s today. Yeah. Uh, but they're still running some of the Intercity 125s. And, you know, but they're get, slowly getting these nice, shiny new trains. Now, the, the good thing about LNER is that it's actually running at a profit. Did you know that? It's Isn't the second it time. Because when, right, so what happened was... When the first, when, when they, when they they money. When they first privat privatised the railways, yeah. they sold uh, the East Coast Main Line uh, to a company that was a containerisation company. I can't remember the parent company, but... They set up a company called GNER, and they were dark blue trains, and they looked yep. really nice. And it was as far as trains go, and you know it was good service. <laughs> it was a sexy train. And, oh, yeah, look at that train. It was, you know. it was July in the sexy trains calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's July. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then they, they, you know, they were quite quite well appointed inside. Then they lost that franchise because the parent company got into some financial difficulty, but GNER was still running at a profit. Yeah. So it was, the franchise was then sold, uh, so it was taken into nationalisation, it was nationalised again. Then it ended up being National Express bought it, the bus company. They said, oh, we're not making enough money at this game, we'll get rid of it. I hate National Express. <laughs> yeah. National Express, if you uh, want to change your ticket, so if you, if you go, go on the National Express website and your ticket somewhere is £13 and you go, yeah, I'll have that, and then immediately go, ah, damn, that's not the Wednesday I wanted, I want the Wednesday after. Cancel that, you can't cancel it. You have to call them up and say, can I cancel this, please? And they go, yeah, that'll be £13 to cancel it. So you're better off just Whereas turning up. if you change your bus with the mega bus, you only lose your booking fee, which is only 50p. Oh, right, okay. So just putting that There's out there. There's a top but, gear top tip for you. But the Megabus is owned by Stagecoach, who uh, was owned by Brian Souter, was it? Who's oh, a, who's a famous uh, Scottish uh, homophobe. Oh, right, so okay. You can't win. So, <laughs> right, okay. So uh, <clears throat> Graham's ethics prevent him from using public transport. Oh, no, I, 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 I only have gay sex on the, on the, on the, on the, on the Megabus. <laughs> <laughs> as, as a protest. <laughs> so, uh, National Express bought the railway company and said, you know what, it's not really working out. The government have banned them from ever applying for another franchise. Uh, it was renationalised, became mm. something, East Coast Mainline, I think, for a while. Then it became... Uh, Virgin. Virgin, yeah. In bed with Stagecoach, funnily yeah, enough. yeah. And they said, you know what, we're not really making that much money on this. Now, it was making money for the government. And then Virgin said, it's not making enough money for us. They've just walked away. They've just said, again, we can't yeah. afford it. And LNER, uh, nationalised by failing grailing, um, and it's making a few quid, apparently. So I might be wrong. No doubt people will correct us in the comments. But the, 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 so we've got this situation where we have LNER nationalised, the train lines themselves nationalised, Ah, oh, but they were nationalised after the Hatfield train accident. Yeah. 
and then because it was rail track it was rail track which network was a rail. private company yeah yes. and now it's network rail uh, and uh, then uh, and, and also we've got TFL which is effectively nationalised mm-hmm. um, th- we do have nationalised trains on, on the other lines um, like Arriva it's owned by Deutsche Bahn which is the national German rail mm-hmm. company you see it is nationalised it's just the wrong nation owns it yeah so um, and there's isn't the some of the, one of our freight companies is DB Schenker, which and is also Deutsche Bahn Schenker. Yeah, yeah, and also SNCF uh, own um, one of our franchises as well. Did they? Which one? I don't know. I will have to look it up. Sorry, we'll put that in the comments. Everything. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the, the, but what's very frustrating is if I buy a ticket from Durham to London. And I get on the train, and it's, say, run by Hull Trains, for instance. I get to York, and for whatever reason, there's a fault on the train, and I have to get off the train. If you say it's cancelled, you'll have to get the next one. But because I've bought an advanced single, I can't get on the next train that comes. I've got to wait for the next Hull, Hull Trains, trains. That's, train, so that's, which might not be for another two hours. That's what the that's what the issue was with my train ticket then. I, I, I would have had to wait rather than 10 minutes because the next train from yeah. Doncaster to York was... Yeah, that's right. ...was the Midland Main Line yeah. or, or East Midlands. Or, or cross-country, sorry, it was cross-country. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to wait for the LNER. That was the problem, yeah. Bastards. So, what's anyway, the solution? Well, What's the solution, Adam? So it's the thing is, can can I bring this back to Brexit before we look at the solution? Yeah, because um, I've had a complaint about one of our videos. We are, we get loads of complaints. No, mate. I've had a really big complaint because we someone said, oh, it, it, to me directly, you know, uh, in a message said it's very interesting, but you went for thirty seven minutes without mentioning Brexit. Yeah, and I'm like. Yeah, but we were leading up to it. It's a big build-up. It's like Star Wars, <laughs> you know, and this was in the Swiss cheese model. Oh, was it? Okay. Which I thought was one of our best yeah, videos. Yeah, it was a really good video. Yeah, and it's got some of the... Swiss cheese model. <laughs> yeah, look for I'm, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put it... I'm going to put a link here, if I remember to. Link. Swiss cheese model. Watch this video. It's really good. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> um, <Yeah>. we've, been, <laughs> we've been waffling on now for 32 minutes, so we'll mention Brexit again. <laughs> So uh, what, they've, what they did is they basically alienated and disenfranchised a lot of people yeah. outside London. Yes. And what, what they did then is it prevented people from travelling yep. because what was really badly affected by the Beechen re- report was um, the uh, railway services to coastal towns yep. and uh, holiday towns. Yep. Uh, well, I, ne- I never want to go back to Western if, if, Super Mare anyway. If but. you want to go from South Wales to North Wales, you have to come back into England. To, yeah. You have to go into England through Hereford yeah. to get up to North Wales. So they basically they disenfranchised all these people. And as you said earlier, it, removing social mobility removed... Uh, Mm. All mobility. We've got Simon, oh, Simon here, who is legend. our look at this. Who is our waiter today? Woo! Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much, sir. You are a gentleman. You have people in this country who are elderly people living in rural areas who effectively or coastal towns yeah, who effectively live under house arrest because there's no public transport to their to where they live. Yeah, yeah. And the buses are awful. Yeah. And and the idea that we have the buses on the road, we have the cars on the road, and you know, we, we the we buses have... get all snarled up in the traffic yeah. caused by all these cars. Yeah. But this, it was a master stroke by the government because all of a sudden everyone's forced to get a car. Yes. They're tied into having a car, so they have to pay road tax, they yeah. have to pay insurance, yeah. and they pay tax on that. They have to pay tax on the fuel. Yeah. Do you know we have some of the highest rates of fuel duty in this country? And it's just staggering. Well, I, I don't want people using fuel, so I don't mind that. No, so but much. the point is, is that it it it, 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 dis- it? it disproportionately affects yeah, people, people with the least money. Yeah, it does. Because it's if a you're massive not, tax, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, if you're not earning a lot of money, yeah. you're going to turn around and say, "I'm not going to take my wife. I, I to, I'm not going to take my wife to London on the train when it's going to cost me 150 pounds yeah. when I can take her in the car that I've already paid for." Yeah. For, 50 or 60 pounds. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. And it, I, I feel this way about parking fines and speeding fines. In, in Finland, your it's speeding fine... where I quite want to be. <laughs> in Finland, um, if you get a speeding fine, it's based on your income. 
So there have been it speeding is. fines of over €100,000 given it, out to people who... But it is here now as well, I think, but it's not the same proportion, but you can but be fine. parking fines, because if, you, if you're driving around London in a Porsche, you're going to just park up on the pavements and go and go to the cash machine or whatever you want to do, because yeah. who cares, you're going to get a £30 fine. That's nothing mm. to, to you, but to most people in the country, to a nurse, that, that, yeah. that is a good chunk of your entire day's wages. Yeah. That is a hugely punitive tax. Did, did you see that thing going around Facebook last year or, or, or earlier this year when it was like, it was a photograph of a parking uh, or a car park in London and the cost per hour yeah. was more than the minimum wage for the UK. It was £10 and the minimum wage is like nine and a half quid, isn't it? I mean, you know your country is you, you, fucked you can see, like that. You can see why people felt that they were being left behind. Oh, yeah. And why they voted yeah. for Brexit in areas like we're in today, in, in York. Well, York Dorham, voted for Remain. Sorry, Yorkshire, I mean. Sorry, Yorkshire, yeah. Um, meaning all four parts of Yorkshire, because it's split into four, isn't it? Yeah. And what is a riding... I don't know. There's like I've, North I've Yorkshire, like South that. Yorkshire, West, and then well, it's well, West it used, Riding of Yorkshire, is it? No, West Riding used to be what is now West Yorkshire and South Yorkshire. Okay. East Riding was sort of over Hallway or whatever. <laughs> okay, we're going to get really technical now. I, anyway. This um, was before my time. But we see, we can see the effects of beaching now in... Brexit in the, in, the, oh, in, in, in the reasons why people voted because for as, Brexit. As well, people have not just lost their ability to commute and, and go on holiday and it's made life a lot more difficult for them. Yeah. But they, they've lost their industries. They've lost... I yeah. mean, my mum, God rest her, she said to me when I was looking at doing an apprenticeship, she said, you can do anything you want but be a coal miner. And I know coal miners and I've got the... I take my hat off to them, you know, I respect them, you know, but it's, it's tough back-breaking, job. tough work. It's, I, I wouldn't and wish I it on my worst enemy. I'll, I'll, I'd wish it on Boris Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you the know... Guy, he doesn't know how to mop. <sighs> the guy doesn't know how to mop. And when he was asked last week, he was on BBC Breakfast, and he asked, how are you relatable? I thought it was a great question. Yeah. To ask him, how, that was, that was how the only, are you relatable? That was the only blow... couldn't because he's not. That was the only blow that Naga Manchetti laid on him, though. I, I didn't see the message. I just saw that. Mm. I thought, good on you for... Yeah. Because that was a bit of a puff piece, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. yeah. I don't think he was expecting that. No. So but, very, but anyway, but, you know, it... it People have lost their industries, and a lot yeah. of these communities were built around the industry. I mean, people, uh, you know, you drive between Sheffield and Rotherham, and there's all these sort of sports grounds that are now owned by, you know, whoever. But there used to be sports and social clubs for the steelworks and the Davy, the Davy Roll Company, who used to supply rolling mill equipment, you know, yeah. and all these industries. They'd have a sports and social club. And... You know, that sense of community is gone. It's been broken. And it's because their industry has been removed and their ability to, to, move, be, anywhere. to move anywhere. So instead you of know. people staying where they were and then travelling to work, that wasn't an option. So what people did was they left where they were. Now, Liverpool is a really good example of this. In the 1960s, the population of Liverpool was getting up to a million people. A million people. It, it, mm. was, it was booming. It was insane. And then within 20 years, that population had more than halved. Well, and that, they, they that is because people, that the industry left and there was no way of getting around. Yeah, the, didn't, didn't Margaret, Tha was it Margaret Thatcher who said she wanted to manage to decline managed decline. Liverpool? Yeah, manage decline, that's the expression she used. I mean, and, and hats off to, to Michael Hel Heseltine, who's become a bit of a hero of Remain. He actually fought for the, the yeah. restoration of Liverpool yeah. uh, with the festival with the, the Albert Dock in the 1960s, uh, 1980s. Uh, but, but, but I mean, the, the so, how, areas. So how many people in Liverpool went, 1960s? It was yeah. going to be a million people. Yeah. Yeah. That is a lot of people, yeah. and you'd think with that kind of people in that city, and then they the, closed the all the railway stations, and, and, so and exchange, all the industry went. Exchange but, went but with the, a million people, you'd have expected that there'd have been some musical talent in that lot. Uh, <laughs> so um, the exchange went, and uh, also Central Station Overland, uh, the the Overground Central Station, which used to go over the water. Exchange used to go up to the north. And then Lime Street, which is positioned so it goes south, went to all the south services and also towards Manchester on the old line. Now, that line that goes to Manchester, there's actually three different lines you can take. One goes via Runcorn, one goes via Wigan, I think, and the other one goes via uh, St. Helens. And the St. Helens we, line is, is, is the one that the, 
the Rainhill trials were all about. But we, we we were in Liverpool and we did one of these videos in yeah. September, didn't we? And yeah. I actually said to you as we were walking around, I cannot believe how many railway stations there are in close proximity. You know, or, or former railway stations. Yeah. The, the, it was it was huge, yeah. wasn't it? So and, and, if and you the look thing at is, a... Sheffield has had two. Yeah. And now there's one. And, you know, and Doncaster was a massive railway town. And if you look yeah. at all these towns that have got, you know... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on to that about Sheffield, actually. But in Liverpool, if you look at the map of Liverpool, look at the affluent areas in the south of Liverpool, they generally have, like, Crescenton and Grass, Grassendale, is it? Uh, Crescenton and um, sort of Mossley Hill area. They have train stations. They have the suburban lines going to them. Actually, in the north, is it looks like it's well serviced by train stations. But actually, within the city of Liverpool, if you go north, you've got Sand Hills, and then you've got on the Southport line, you go up through Bootle, and so you're in another jurisdiction because uh, Bootle is actually Sefton Council. It's not Liverpool City Council. The amount of train stations in in the north is is limited because there's just big gaps between them. There's none left in the east of the city. And you've got places like Old Swan and Novice Green that used to have train stations. You can still see the old train lines there. Or in, in the case of Old Swan, there is a train line still there, but it's only used for goods now. Mm. Uh, Trubruk, that you can see the train line going over. on. on uh, the, you can see the trains going on it with the, the goods at night and things. But it's not used for suburban uh, passenger use anymore. And they are the most deprived areas of the city. Croxteth. You know, I, you, you can't get to these places Wasn't by train anymore. Wasn't the in one of those in the early Toxteth. That was Toxteth, right. Toxteth has a closed railway station. There's a railway station that very, uh, well, it's not really Toxteth. It, it's getting onto the Baltic Triangle. So if you come down Princess Road, and then you've got the synagogue and everything at the end of that road. Uh, if you turn left and go down towards the church, uh, as if you go into the Baltic Triangle, there is actually an old railway station that used to be there called... St. James's Station, that's been taken away. There's also one that used to be, uh, if you go to Smith Down Roads, you know where the Brookhouse Pub is, or the Finch and Firkin, or whatever it's called these days, uh, there used to be a station there called Sefton Park, and if that station was there, it would service all the students who live in that area, because that's a really studenty area. And, of course, and, students want to save money. Yeah, and on that line, <laughs> when they put in the original train line going from Crown Street, which is the original Liverpool terminus, to, uh, to what's now uh, Lime Street Station, which came a few years later, uh, when they were putting that tunnel in, it was cut and cover, which means they, they, they cut a big trench, put a line in the middle, you know, um, down there, put, put and then they cut on it. And then and they then put a roof on it. it and cover it with soil. <laughs> um, they left a gap for a future train station at the university. And yeah, it's, it's never there. been, never it's been there. used. It's there, the train line is there. It has trains on it, it has passenger trains on it. Just put the bloody stations station back. The... And then we've got this, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go on about Liverpool for a bit, sorry, the Mersey side. We have a situation where <laughs> Mersey Rail, which is actually a, a very good train service. So I, that's I, like a metro system. Yeah, I, yeah. I used to live in Old Park, um, and that, from Old Park Station to town took about 10 minutes, and it cost like £1.80 return, it was brilliant. And why would I drive? Well, no, I well you that wouldn't, option. I mean, yeah. Why would I pay for parking in town when I had this option? Um, but um, if you go further along that line, it ends in Ormskirk, and then there's a buffer on the track, and the, the, the track continues. The track continues all the way to Preston. But between Ormskirk and Preston, there's just one line, uh, one, one rail, yeah, mm -hmm. one track, and it's uh, run by Northern, I think. And they, they, it's like one train an hour. Yeah. And it's an old diesel shed well, thing. Well, it is it's, one, it's one, one of your paces. One of your paces, yeah. And it doesn't run on Sundays. Oh, and so... so yeah. Okay, here's, a, here's an idea. Why not take that buffer off the track and just extend the Mersey Rail franchise on that line, on that particular line, to... To, to Preston and there's another one that goes to Kirby and then it goes on to Wigan you could do that the mm. same there yeah yeah now when you're talking about uh, Sheffield. Sheffield Sheffield right you used to have two railway stations yes and one of them was serviced by the train line that went from Manchester through the Woodhead Tunnels which are now used for electricity cables cables um, through the Woodhead Tunnels to Sheffield the other station what was it called I think it was one? Victoria but I'll, I will double check on that um, and then it used to go down to London and this via was, Rugby and Coventry yeah, I think. and this was a graded line, so it was all either below the, the, the roads or above the roads. It, there were no level crossings. It didn't have any um, very steep 
corners to it because it was a high speed rail line and it was originally envisaged to miss out all of the, the big areas and just get mm. you to London really fast. Yeah. The, 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 I think it was called the Grand Central Main Line. And this was in, originally envisaged to go to the Channel Tunnel. Yes. And do you know when he built it, Adam? Uh, in the 1890s. Yeah, and they closed it in the wow. 1960s. Yeah. And the because in, it was duplicating lines that already existed. Because the, there was the middle and main line went into Sheffield and up yeah. to Leeds, and the great uh, um, the London North East Railway, or whatever it was called then, was going up to Doncaster. Yeah. So was, but you see, uh, Sheffield, you, you've got Sheffield Central Station here, and you've got the old Victoria Station here, and there's the, there's this area of Sheffield called the Wicker. And it's the, it's the Wicker Arches, which is this where this old railway line used to go over it. And there's still, you can see where they've patched it up, where there was bomb damage in the war. Wow. You know, underneath, it's quite interesting, really. So that's where all that is, down the Wicker. That's all old railway infrastructure. Yep. And you can see they've actually built roads on it. And, you know, you can see by the lie of it, it's like, yeah, that's definitely the railway architecture there. You know what I mean? It's, but a lot of what HS2 is trying to do is replacing the lines that were taken up by beaching like the Grand Central Main Line, which, yes, it did duplicate another line Service, that was already yeah. there, but only as much as the A1M duplicates, duplicates the, the M1, M1. Yeah. or the M6 toll duplicates the, the M6. M6. Yeah. Or oh, the M62 replicates the M56 or the, or, or the M58. Yes, that you need all the alternative routes because otherwise you have all these trains and don't forget it's not just intercity stuff going from Liverpool or Manchester down to London. You've also got the little commuter regional trains using the same bit of track. Yeah. So if I'm on the West Coast Main Line coming from Liverpool to London and, and there's some little <laughs> pacer <laughs> on the track ahead, my super fast 200 mile an hour train has to stop and wait for that thing to get off our track so we can continue on to yeah. London. Yeah. And, and so if HS2 goes ahead, great. It means that we have an alternative. We have um, more capacity. And I, I wish they called it high, uh, greater capacity. That's not as sexy as, it, as high no, speed. But, but it's not about but, the speed. But, it's about <laughs> taking these regional railway things off. And also, if we want to upgrade the West Coast Main Line, which we desperately need to do, you can either do it for the next 70 years on Sundays and make everyone get a rail replacement bus, and it's so hard to actually do any infrastructure stuff in a day. I mean, just just imagine this. Well, I mean, look at what happens thing. every holiday. Yeah, King's Cross. I mean, we, we were we were going down to London for a for one of the marches and. Yeah. Um, we it, we couldn't get a train because they were upgrading King's Cross. Yeah. And so all trains stopped at Peterborough. You yeah. Know, it's just bizarre. You but know. If you had the alternative, you could, it, there was another track that you could take exactly. as a train. Exactly, if they'd not pulled up the central but line. But here's something interesting. Yeah. If you're driving a train and you decide that, you, that there's, there's a problem on the line ahead, like a tree has fallen on the line, you as a train driver, unless you have actually driven a train down the other tracks, you can't take an alternative route. No, it's not unless, like a car. Unless yeah. you've, you've done it already. You know, by law, you mm. have to have, or, well, by, by law, whatever, you've got to have gone down that track already. That was actually on a, on a train that came up towards Durham that uh, couldn't, I was going up to Newcastle. Uh, I was trying to get to Durham, but he went up to Newcastle because there was, a, there was a problem. I think it was a tree or something fell on the track or a signalling box fell or something. And what they actually did was they put it onto the suburban rail line well, along the and, Durham and coast. You sat, but you sat on these high-speed trains that are going... Chugga -dugga, chugga -dugga, yeah, yeah. Chugga -dugga. I mean, it was a beautiful view and everything, but yeah, the but point you're is... Just thinking, I want to get there. <laughs> it's a network. All these train lines are the same gauge. You can just put a train from one onto the other. Yeah, it's a yeah. diesel train. You're laughing. Yeah. You can go mm. anywhere. Not that I want it to all be diesel. I mean, I want it all to be electric. And the electrification but has taken a, so long. But even, even a diesel train is far more environmentally friendly than, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people you can get on an Intercity 125, 300 people, let's say. You know, that's more environmentally friendly than 300 people in cars. Yeah. In but, 300 cars. You yeah. know, it's, I mean, let's, let's we, want, we want to improve the environment, but <clears throat> at the moment we, we'll deal with having the diesel trains, but it, it's still more environmentally friendly. Okay. I'd, you know, I'd yeah. love to be able to afford to go to London and use the train. Do you know there was a, a follow-up to the Beaching Acts called Beaching 2? 
Mm. That was just going to get rid of all the trail. <laughs> all yeah, it wouldn't have surprised lines. me. Yeah. Um, but um, I have to actually go now because I've got to go and get the train. Yes. And if I don't go now, I, the next one isn't for an hour. Mm. So, uh, well, the next one I can get is not for an hour. So we're going to yeah. have to do beaching two at some point. At some point. Unlike reality where we didn't get beaching two, thank God. So we do have quite a few train tracks that are left, but those that are left are badly managed and we really need to bring back the ones that we've lost. But 500 million is not going to cut it. And I would like an apology from the Conservative Party for f for foisting this situation on us in the first place. But, uh, so it's kind of like Brexit because basically what Beechin did as, as the UK's most hated civil servant he fucked up our future before we were even born and Boris Johnson wants to fuck up the future of other people's children who haven't even been thought of yet do you reckon in 50 years time the Tory party be going hey I've got this great idea we're going to put 500 million aside to rejoin, rejoin the, the EU. EU yeah mm. indeed and on that note, here's the EU here's for the EU cheers